Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Stephen Shelley, and you're watching The Eagles Cry. I want to welcome you to the broadcast today and tell you what a wonderful privilege it is to be able to come into your home or wherever you're viewing this broadcast and announce to you the good news of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. The Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He changes not. 2,000 years ago, the Son of God, God in human flesh, walked the earth, our Messiah, our Savior, our Deliverer. And we understand the gospel story. He was crucified, he died, he went into the grave, but that was not the end of the story. Satan was hoping that it was. But on the third day, he was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And he raised from the dead. He is the resurrection. He told Martha and Mary concerning the death and resurrection of their brother Lazarus before he raised him from the dead. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. They said, well, we know our brother will live again in the resurrection. And Jesus, Yeshua, he just said, I am. You're looking at the resurrection. He is resurrection life. And so we just speak to the dead, to those who are spiritually dead, to those who are spiritually numb, to those who have not yet come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We just declare to you, I prophesy to you today, He is the resurrection and the life. If you trust Him, you can have eternal life. This body of flesh that we live in will one day die and it will go into the grave, but there is a resurrection, there is hope. And one day we know that we're going to live forever and ever in the kingdom of God. And so we just feel so blessed to be able to share even that. If that was all that I could share with you today, I would feel extremely blessed to be able to announce that good news. Some of you have heard it for 30 years, 40 years, 70 years, your whole life. Others of you perhaps changing channels, surfing across this a network found this program and you may have never heard that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, is alive and well and doing, might I add, great things among his people all over the world. I know you've heard about the outpourings of God's Holy Spirit. It sounds like another day of Pentecost. People are being overcome by the power of God. Somebody said, oh, I'm not interested in that. Well, we need to be. We need to be interested in the fullness of God's Spirit operating in our lives. Because death is at work in our members. Death is at work in this physical body. And if in this life, the Bible tells us in the New Testament, if in this life only we have hope, then we are of all men most miserable but I'm thankful that my hope is not only in this life, but in the life hereafter. And so I want to share with you some uh, insight from the scripture today. And I want to thank you for contacting us. You have called. Some of you have sent letters and emails to let us know. This program is airing on several networks. It is also streamed live over the internet. Uh, on the two networks, the Gospel Channel out of Iceland, all across uh, Europe and the UK, and then on Angel TV out of southern India. We're going out across the Middle East and Asia, and both of these networks stream uh, their channel over the internet. And also, we release some of these programs on podcast, so you can go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast, our Eagle Cast. And uh, for more information on how to do that, you can visit our website at revival.org. Revival.org. I'm going to spell revival R E V I V A L dot. Org, o -R -G. I want to make it simple because you'd be surprised how many ways I've seen people spell revival over the years. And spelling is not my uh, number one gift either. So 
Uh, I just want to make it simple for you. It'll be on the screen as well. Let's get into the Word of God today. And again, thank you for tuning in. We're going to begin a series where we're going to be speaking to you about exercising the spirit of man. We are a triune being. We are body, soul, and spirit. And we want to talk about that, but we're going to do it slowly. We're going to teach from the scripture, and I believe you'll be blessed by our time together today. Amen. So let's get started. In John chapter 3, we read a very familiar portion of scripture. Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus, this ruler among the Jews who came to Jesus by night. He didn't come in the daytime. He came under the shadow of darkness in secret. His heart was a, a heart of inquiry. He was interested and he came to Jesus to find out just what was going on. You see, being a Jew, he was very religious, very knowledgeable of the law. He knew the prophecies concerning the coming of the Messiah. And he was just fascinated. But because he was a ruler among the Jews, he didn't want to be identified. He didn't want people to know that he had come. So he came by night and he asked Jesus in John chapter 3, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. This is verse 2. For no man can do these things that thou doest except God be with him. Now, I want to skip down for the purpose of this study, to verse 6. And, well, I guess we better get verse 5 in here because it's the most uh, powerful and important verse probably in this chapter. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, surely, surely, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. How important is being born of the Spirit? Well, without it, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, of course, you know Nicodemus, he, he didn't understand this, and he said, how can I enter a second time into my mother's womb and be born all over again? Now I'm a grown man of full stature, and Jesus is giving him the revelation of how uh, a new birth in the Spirit is possible. But I want to read verse 6, 7, and 8. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Understand, that which originates, initi is initiated in the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. And then verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Now, just for those of you who may have never heard that simple plan of the gospel that we were talking about a moment ago, how is one born of the Spirit? Well, we must repent of our sins. We must acknowledge before God that we have sinned, and we have. The Bible tells us in Romans, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But John 3, 16 tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now another scripture tells us greater love hath, hath any man than this. There's, there's no greater love possible than a man would lay down his life for his friends. This tells us of the great love of God that he was willing to uh, condescend. He came down into a body made of flesh and that flesh was crucified the life that was in him, the eternal spirit of the Father, did not die. Did you notice? I said the eternal spirit of the Father did not die. But the fleshly body of the Lord Jesus Christ did die. Paying the price. The Bible tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so we see from the book of Genesis, the Garden of Eden, all the way through to the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, that blood was necessary, the shedding of blood. 
interestingly enough, the blood of Jesus was not just the ordinary blood. It didn't just have the DNA of man, but it had the DNA of God. It was blood that was specifically designed for man's redemption. Hallelujah. And it doesn't just remit our sin. It doesn't just cover, I should say, it doesn't just cover our sin, but it remits our sin. In other words, it takes it away through justification, just if I'd justified, just if I'd never sinned. Oh my, this is a wonderful thing that our loving Father has done for us. So we need to repent of our sin, acknowledge that we're a sinner, and invite the Lord Jesus Christ into our life. And we can be born again. We can be. And then the Spirit of God comes in and washes us and sanctifies us cleanses us, sets us apart, and then we can be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And if you've never heard of that, if you can get a hold of a New Testament, read in Acts chapter 2. The Bible calls it, if you're, if you're not familiar, you see there are people listening to me that are not familiar with the layout of the Bible. So I want to encourage you uh, to look into it. In a New Testament, you're going to have the four Gospels first, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the four Gospels, the good news of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Four individual men who were eyewitnesses to the miraculous ministry of Jesus Christ in the earth. And then the next book in the Bible, the fifth book of the Bible, is called in most Bibles, the Acts of the Apostles. That's what we're talking about, the book of Acts, chapter 2. Read it, and you'll read about how the power of the Holy Spirit was poured out during the Jewish feast of Shavuot, one of the three major feasts in the Hebrew calendar where God commanded that every male Hebrew would come to Jerusalem, to the temple, and worship God. And they were doing that for Shavuot when the heavens opened up the fire of God came down, hallelujah, and a mighty rushing wind, and they were all baptized with the Spirit. That completes the new birth. When a baby is born, first there is an issue of, of, of water, and then an issue of blood, and then an issue of life. So the, the natural birth, the breaking of the water, the issuing of forth of the blood is the baby's coming forth and then life. In three steps, so is the spiritual birth. The natural birth, three steps. The spiritual birth, also three phases. Repentance, we repent, we become justified. We allow the word of God to penetrate our lives and instruct us and wash us. The scripture said we are, wa we are washed are cleansed or sanctified by the washing of the water of God's Word. That speaks of the great power of God's Word. Then we are filled with the precious, wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost and fire. And I'm telling you, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Acts 2.38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So it's a promise, and it is a gift. This is how we come. Now, we want to talk about something uh, that is I think vitally important to understand as spirit-filled believers. So now we've spent this time just introducing whoever might be watching who needed to uh, have your memory refreshed on the plan of salvation or perhaps you've never really heard it before. You've heard about Christians, you've heard about those who follow Jesus and what you've heard may or may not be true, may not be the truth. Because, uh, and as we should say, I think, uh, that everyone who names the name of Christ is not following the Word of God. And so there are going to be people who say, well, I was born a Christian. I was born a Christian. My mother was a Christian. Well, I want to tell you something. Friend, God doesn't have any grandchildren. And so you're, you're not just a Christian because your mother was a Christian or your father was a Christian uh, because you, that may be your religion. But we're not talking about religion. We're talking about relationship. Oh, and every man, woman, boy, or girl 
uh, is invited to have for themselves a personal encounter with the living God. A true blue, real, genuine relationship with Jesus. You say, well, that's impossible because Jesus left the earth. He died, raised from the dead, and some 30, 40 days later, ascended into heaven, we're told. And so where is he now? Well, that's where you need to read Acts chapter 2. I'll tell you where Jesus is. He's right here, living inside of me. Uh-oh, somebody said, I'm turning that preacher off. He said he was Jesus. Well, every spirit-filled believer is carrying in them a deposit of the zoe. That's a Greek word for the life of God. It's inside of us. So where is Jesus in the earth? He is not in one physical corporate body. He is now in a multitude, a many-membered body where we are walking out by the Spirit of the Lord, introducing the life of God to the earth. For more information, if you need to understand some of these things, we don't have time to go into the, the complete depth of it today. Contact us. The address is given, the email address is given, and we'll be glad to help you get some resources or something, uh, information, a CD or, or a, a printed article or something that would help you, or a list of the scriptures that would help you to engage, to embark on a wonderful journey through the scripture. Now, I want us to talk about uh, this triune being that we are. You see, God is triune. Now, when I'm teaching, I don't use the word trinity. Not that I don't believe that there is a, uh, a trinity of attributes in God, a trinity of because, you know, the tricycle has three wheels. So I'm, I'm not opposed to that, except for the fact that sometimes when people explain the Trinity, they are really using uh, hyper-Trinitarianism, extreme Trinitarianism, where they get God so divided into three separate people that they lose all reality or concept of the oneness of God. And because my heritage, my great-grandparents were Jewish and they were from Lithuania, uh, I see very clearly in the Torah, in the, in the Bible, that God is one. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. But he has decided, it was God's decision, to reveal himself in a triunity in a great oneness, in a great unity of spirit. Same spirit. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him. How? In spirit and in truth. But he took his spirit, and he has manifested himself in three distinct, I think we can say distinct, manifestations, personalities, administrations, and what are they? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I don't want you to leave this broadcast thinking that I do not teach the, the triunity of God. I do. I see it very clearly. I could never deny it because you're made similar. You and I are also uh, some sort of triunity, a triune being. We are made up of body. That's this flesh. That's what you see uh, on the outside. And then inside of this physical body, there's two parts of me that you can't see. One is my soul. And the soul is often referred to as the seat of the emotions. And inside of the soul, so to speak, if you were drawing circles, three circles inside of each other, is the human spirit. Now, the interesting thing about the human spirit is in the Garden of Eden, Adam was given the Spirit of God. It was breathed into him and it created for Adam a human spirit. So what was living inside of Adam, his spirit was actually the spirit. His spirit, Adam's spirit, was actually the spirit. It was the essence of of the eternal God. We live in a, to make it a little bit simpler, we live in a three compartment home, a three room 
home. You could put it on three levels. Uh, or you could put it as three separate rooms. I've heard people say it's like a kitchen, a parlor, a, or a living room, and a bedroom. And then I've heard people say it's three levels of floors. If you wanted to do that, then we could say that we live on the middle floor and we can choose to uh, sort of reside there forever or we can also move up into another realm or another floor, the spirit realm or move down into the realm of the soul and I know that's sounding a little bit complicated and that's why I want to just really teach very slow we're just laying sort of a foundation here today so you really need to tune in again next week and the next and the next because we're going to go through some scriptures here that I think are very important but let me just just give you a few notes here one each of us has the capacity and the ability to find expression and fulfillment in either the upper floor or in the lower floor. Or we could say uh, if we're living in the living room of our home, we can be happy in the kitchen, we can have peace there, we can have peace in the bedroom, we can move back and forth and enjoy our life. I know that is sounding a little bit odd, but you'll get it. I know you will because we're going to go through it so plain and so many times and restate it and give so many examples that you're going to catch it. I know. And it's for you. It's for you to understand because I believe that we're about to come into a place in the kingdom of God where there is coming forth a company of people all over the world, in every nation of the world, in the islands of the sea, who will be granted the spirit of the overcomer or the anointing of the overcomer. We're not just going to survive in these terrible times that the world is facing right now. There's going to be a bride of Christ. There's going to be an overcoming company of people that no matter what's going on around them in the natural, they're going to move in the realm of the supernatural. We're going to have supernatural protection. We're going to have supernatural healing and health. We're going to have supernatural leadership. I believe that God's going to have a people who uh, are so connected, their spirit man is so connected. Now, I guess I should say that we connect with the world around us, with the atmosphere, with the earth around us through the realm of the soul. But we connect with God, with the heavenly dimension, with the third heaven, we connect through our spirit man. And so the inside of the inside is the spirit man. The five senses that we know of, uh, uh, the, the smelling and the seeing, the hearing, the tasting, the feeling, so forth, these five senses are ways that we contact, that we have communication with the earth, with the world around us, with what we can see, with what we can hear, with what we can smell, what we can taste, what we can feel. These are ways that our flesh is able to connect to the world around us. And what we gather through these five senses is filtered into the soul of man. Now, our spirit man is on the inside of that, and that's what we want to see exercised in this hour. Through the transgression, through the fall in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve lost the ability to move into that spirit realm. They only had connection with the earthly realm. Through the five senses of the flesh, that information filtered into the soul, so any kind of communication that they had was very low-level communication, low-level understanding. But there was a time that Adam was able to access God through his spirit because he was made in the very image and in the very likeness of God. Because of the fall, he lost that ability to function both in the natural realm and in the spirit realm and he only functioned in the natural realm. And I don't know about you, but the natural realm is pretty limited. Somebody said, what in the world are you talking about? Well, it's in the realm of the natural realm, this earthly realm, that we uh, find sickness, that we find troubles, that we get into bad situations, that we deal with a lot of, uh, of ugly stuff, with addiction, with generational curses, with so many things that the enemy uses to hold us back. We want to break out of this 
realm of the soulish realm, the emotions and the mind and the, and the affections and the imaginations and the conscious realm, all this stuff that pollutes us, that weighs us down, and we want to be able to move into the realm of the Spirit. I believe God gave us the Holy Spirit because He wanted us to be able to function whole. We are to be whole. We, are, uh, we receive a lot of woundedness in this life, don't we? We lose a lot of our spiritual ground. We lose a lot of that sometime when we get slapped upside the head with circumstances, when we get sick, when, when our loved ones, we see our loved ones suffering. There's so many things that happen to us to distract us. That's really what I want to say. There's so much going on, we get it through our five senses, we hear bad news, we see bad news, we can almost smell bad news. Uh, there's so much of that that distracts us from developing a relationship of intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to see the, the Spirit of God give us some strength to place some boundaries in our life to shut out some of the influences that the enemy wants to use to distract us. I mean, we've got to live and we've got to function in the earthly realm. But, and, and we have access to that earthly realm. But we want to be able to control that. We want to be able to determine by the Spirit of God how we let our circumstances affect us. In other words, the enemy doesn't want you to have joy. He wants to steal your joy. He's a joy thief. But... Uh, things are going to come, circumstances are going to come that sort of try to affect our peace and affect our joy. But the test is how quickly, how quickly do you come back to joy? If you get sidetracked, you start losing some of your peace and joy, how quick do you come back to that? Do you just kind of wallow around in self-pity? Do you kind of wallow around in oppression and depression? Or do you quickly just start standing on the promises of God and rebuking the enemy and saying, I'm going to focus my attention on the Lord Jesus Christ. And brother, sister, if you start doing that, I don't care how adverse the circumstances are. I don't care how bloody the wounds are. If you start focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to come back to joy. You're going to come back to peace every time. And I'm feeling some of that joy. I'm feeling some of that peace right now as I speak to you about how available it is in the body of Christ. But we need to pray and go off the air. And I hope you'll tune in again to the program, The Eagles Cry, next week. But let's pray. Father, I'm excited. It took me a whole program to get excited to start moving into what I wanted to speak about. And Lord, I just pray. I know I've kind of move quickly and I don't want to confuse anybody I want to bless people and I just pray Lord that you will uh, by the Holy Spirit you will let us digest your word let us get understanding let us get supernatural knowledge and then father above all things let us begin to live this out so we just come against the works of the enemy that try to distract and hinder God's people in this last day and I just release deliverance right now. Let's just get right to it. I release deliverance from distraction, from bondages, from addictions. Lord, let somebody just reach up to you and send mercy and grace into their home, into their place of business, wherever they are, and let your peace fill that home. I release your peace right now into that home into that place of gathering. Let your peace and your joy and your comfort come in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. I want to thank you for watching The Eagles Cry. Tune in again next time. God bless you. I love you. I want to be a blessing to you. Bye-bye for today.